program. I am B.D. Freeman. We're all here having a really good time because we have a special guest tonight. Usually I go on and go ahead and do my uh, opening monologue, but no monologue tonight because I'm too excited because tonight we have here the one, the only, Eddie Rubin. <laughs> Give it to him. Just lather him with it. Oh, he likes to be lathered with it. How are you, Eddie? Thank you, Thank you for Thank being here, man. Thank you for being here. Listen, you know, the, the first thing that I wanted to ask you for like years and years of watching you, and by the way, how many years has it been now in Hollywood? I got here in 1990. So I kind of started right. Uh, I was in high school. Right? <laughs> I, was, I, was a little, I was a little out of high school. I was out of college. Uh, and I started in 90, and um, I had finished uh, my college stint in the speech and debate and forensics team, and I was going to leave school in 89, uh -huh. and then my speech and debate teacher said, please don't go, can you be in our speech and debate team and compete in speech, in, in the theater interpretation, in the dual interpretation of the forensics team. Yeah. And I said, oh, uh, what is it? Well, you act, kind of act, you ha hold a script, but you act and you, act, you do facial expressions like acting. I said, oh, okay, I guess, okay, let's do it. I, so uh, instead of leaving in September of 89, I stayed, and then the first tournament I, tournament I went to, we took our pieces to the tournament, and um, we won. Wow. <laughs> Wait a minute. So, I, so when you started, you, 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 you didn't have any uh, expectations of becoming an actor. I didn't. I didn't know, I was, uh, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do. In 89, I was kind of, you know, I was in college. I was, wanted to leave college. I didn't know where I was going, what I was doing, but... People up to that point, between 85 and 89, said, you know, you're really funny. Are you a comedian? Or are, you, are you an actor? You're an actor, aren't you? I'm not. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but, uh, so I, 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 well, wait a minute. Let's go, let me go back to this, because uh, uh, I'm really interested in this speech and debate. How did you get into it in the first place? Like, I took a speech communication class. Now, this is in college. You didn't start in high school. You started in college. Started in college. Okay. Speech, speech communication. And... Um, you know, and what I'm, is that for everybody who doesn't really know what, what, what speak, that is? Uh, extemporaneous speaking, public speaking, um, communication, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. And then you have, and then there, personal communication. then there are competitions that and you go to. And they have competitions, yeah. uh, speech and debate and competitions. You, and you have a uh, subject matter? Like everyone, well, no, does everyone I, I pick was, a subject matter I or are you give one? I competed in the acting, the ah, acting part of it. So okay. there was the speeches and, the, and then there, and, and there was um, debates where people would go like lawyers and, and, and prove their cases and someone would win. And then they had this whole theater, and I was in the theater uh, division of competition. So in the first tournament, we did a dual interpretation from a, uh, from a play called Scooter Thomas Makes It To The Top Of The World, a real moving piece where you know we, we make you laugh, we make you cry. And uh, me and my partner, Steve, we went to the first tournament. And I guess you, know, you can get the scoring goes one, two, three, four. If you get a one, that means you're number one, you're first place for the round. So they would give you a first place. So what ended up happening is we got what's called the ticket fence. Hmm. We got ones in every round from every judge all the way to the finals, won the finals of the first tournament. And at that point, I said, shit, I'm good. <laughs> I'm really good. And then I thought, okay. I'm acting. People, I'm, I'm on stage. I'm getting awards. I'm, I, I got my first award. I'm like, this is great. They say it. This is great. So then we went and we did the rest of the, year, the tournament. So from that point on, because it would be different scenes from different cities, from different colleges, we'd go to one place, everybody would compete. As soon as they saw me and my partner walk out of the room, you always heard, oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one. You guys. So we, we you guys were like the faces from Saturday Night Fever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we put the fear in people the whole yeah. year and ended up win winning the year. And then in, 19, in, uh, in May of 1990, I said, I'll go to Hollywood. I didn't know what my journey was going to be in Hollywood. I didn't know it was going to take so long. I didn't know. <laughs> I, Me I didn't and know you I, both, brother. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I was going to have to go through things I had to go through and meet the people and get sidetracked and all that well, stuff. Well, how did – how, how did uh, – Take us through to your, now you've left college, speech and debate, speech and debate acting, yep. and you're in the acting department there, and I you go cleaned up. Right. Now, how does that lead to the first audition where you actually get work? 
my first real my first job because it was in 1990. I got to Hollywood. I got greeted by the science somebody from Scientology who ended up walking me down Hollywood Boulevard to the building, sitting me in a room with a with a woman that identified as a man at that point, I believe. Mm-hmm. And she was <laughs> and she was uh, uh, like the sergeant in Scientology. Anyways, bringing back around, I got out of there. I went into my apartment, lived there, and then I didn't get I, I didn't know what to do. No, how do I get an agent? How do I get on television? A year in, a year in, I was like, oh, what do I got to do to get on TV? So I got on Love Connection. There you go. <laughs> do you All right. Love Connection with Chuck Willary. So I remember. The now there was a lot of actors who did yes, that. Yes, right? there was a lot of actors who went that way. I was in. Uh, uh, I even remember the uh, the show's opening, and it goes something like this. Welcome to Love Connection, where old-fashioned romance meets modern-day technology, where you hear all the intimate details of a first date. Sometimes our dates end in a happy ending, I love you, and some other times, well, there's just an ending. Bitch! But it's always, <laughs> it's always unpredictable when two strangers meet, trying to make that love connection. And now here's your host, Chuck Willery! Yeah! All right! That was the uh, Love Connection tribute that was my to, uh, from the B.D. Freeman show. Wow, man, you really have it down. So I got on that show, and it was funny enough because, you know, I, 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 was, I knew that I was going to have the broad audience that I had with that because mm-hmm. it was such a big show. So I knew that if what I would do, my nuances, what I could do to maybe entice people around the country, maybe people who knew me from high school, and they, everybody, everybody saw it. It was a fucking hit. Am I allowed to say it? You can say that. Go okay. ahead. It was a hit. It we we, we do like to say this is a family show, okay. but every once in a while, okay. somebody drops a bomb. It was a hit. People <laughs> loved it. As a matter of fact, I took the tape from that, and I sent it into In Vivid Color. And I, I, was, put on, I, was, put on, I was put on their, what do you call it, their the hold? The list yeah. to be on In Living Color. I, I never got on the show, but I was in with the show. Oh, yeah. I never ended up getting on the show with Jim Carrey, all that stuff. And then the 90s was tough because it was Jim Carrey and Ben Stiller and me without an agent and me not tagged and me going off to other directions where I should have been. And then 95 came around and I ended a relationship that was toxic. And then... Uh, Ooh, I, let's talk about that. <laughs> so, well, I, had, I finally got an agent. I, I finally got an agent in '92, mm. and that agent was a customer at a place called Silo. Kind of like, kind of like a Circuit City. Ah. Silo came from the East Coast, and they wanted to make an electronic store, refrigerators, all that stuff. Right where Ross is right now, on the corner of Sunset and La Bre- and Sunset and La Brea. Mm-hmm. There's a Ross there. Well, that used to be a Silo in '92. And then this woman came in, she's looking for TV, and she's an agent at a place called Joseph Elfond and Rick, which is now Kazarian Spencer and Associates. That building was on the corner of Hollywood and Highland before Hollywood and Highland was even... Hollywood and Highland. Hollywood and Highland. It was an office building, and their, their offices were in there. So I begged her, I said, you've got to bring me in. I'm really, I'm really talented. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I won the speech and debate competition. <laughs> I was amazing. <laughs> and I was like, what am I going to tell her? I've done so little. But <laughs> can you represent me? And they brought me in, and um, I, I wowed them with no, no resume, no nothing. And they took me out as a client. And they started sending me auditions, and that was in 92. At the time, I was with the, with the, with the toxic relationship. Uh-huh. And that, uh, that girl, uh, her name was Ingrid. We met, I met her at a, a Hollywood modeling event. Slash photographer trying to get you $3,500 to make you think that you're going to make it as an actress or a model, <laughs> but we're just taking your money. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One of those. So I've been to a lot of those. Yes. Yeah. It was like one of those mixers yes. where you've got to pay some money if you want to be in Hollywood. Yeah. Thing. And I met her there and then got sidetracked. You know, I got a little wit. <laughs> and um, so I got out of that in 95, and that was crazy, and I got married in the end to the girl and Blah, blah, blah. And then in 95, I got out. And then in 97, from 90 to 97, I didn't do jack. I tried. I had agents. I got sidetracked. She was a model. I helped her with her career. Then I, then she got, then I introduced her to my agent. She got my agent. She ends up booking commercials. I end up, I end up oh, 
honey. <laughs> You're doing good. <laughs> oh, that's got to feel good at home. <laughs> what about me? So she started making money and doing commercials, and I'm like, and they didn't re-sign me, and they kept her, and I'm like, oh, my God. Get this bitch out of here. <laughs> so then uh, uh, once we were finished, finally, and uh, 90 uh, rolls around, then I get another uh, manager. Up to this point, I probably, probably had four or five agents. Now by then, 97, I have a little Jewish woman manager who takes me on, and she sends me out on a um, – on a call for a Jerry Lewis. Anybody know who Jerry Lewis is? You remember of course, Jerry? of course. Uh, the new generation doesn't. Jerry Lewis, Dean Martin. They were looking for Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin lookalikes for to tribute to do a tribute to them in the March issue of Esquire magazine, 1997. Ah. So I go in. I'm bald at the time. I just literally shaved my head a couple years before. And I go in with two bald, and I walk in, and there's all these guys there. They got goofy suits on, and they got glasses. Oh, 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 ah. And I always love Jerry Lewis because he's one of my favorites. So not such a great guy in the end, but you know, he's one of my favorite guys. <laughs> but um, and nobody even knows about, nobody even remembers the telethons he did, which were amazing for a great cause. No, I would hope people would remember the uh, muscular but dystrophy telethons. Now, we used to we used to stay years. awake all weekend just to watch them. I know. Hold on, I want I want to just, I want you to keep talking about that. We got to cut for a minute so we can uh, pay some bills. We'll be right back from Beanie Freeman's show. Eddie Rubin. <laughs> I hope you guys had a really good poop. Now we're right back with uh, with Eddie Rubin. Now you were talking about uh, the Jerry, uh, Lewis. Jerry Lewis. Yes. So my uh, my manager sends me on this audition for a Jerry Lewis layout, a tribute to Lewis and Martin in the night in the the March edition of Esquire magazine, 1997. So I go in and there's a bunch of guys in the lobby, and I'm I'm bald and uh, they're not, and they have hair and they have glasses and everybody's going. <laughs> and they're sitting in their seats, and I'm like, ah, they don't have because I used to, I used to love Jerry, so I used to practice his faces, and I used to do it. <laughs> I used to, I used to, I used to, and that's all you did. No, most people can't do that. So I knew that I had something special because a Jerry Lewis kind of guy doesn't come along often. Between, between Jerry Lewis and Jim Carrey. Those are the those are it, and I feel kind of like prototype. I, I felt like that I was kind of in that mode, but I didn't right. get that opportunity in the nineties. So I walk in and I do those faces. I said, "And uh, uh, welcome, hi Eddie Rubin, how are you?" So yeah, and I'm bald. I'm like, I'm like, hey, 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 lady, hey, lady, what? Hey, ha, 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 yeah, yeah. And I just that's pretty much what I did. I booked it on the spot. There was still, there was still fifty, there was still fifty people waiting in the in the in the waiting room, <laughs> and I already booked it, oh, and they wow. had to see them all. They were all so I scheduled. I did the I did the shoot. It's good money. Had the D. Martin guy comes out. I'm in the same magazine as the first interview of Matt Damon. Wow. Very Good-Well nice. Hunting. In Esquire. And I was Esquire, Esquire a black magazine. And nope. It's, oh, it's kind of like GQ, but oh, okay. Not. It just seems like it should be with Esquire. It just <coughs> seems like it should be a black. Yeah, exactly. But and speaking of that, now from the time that I first saw you, I thought you were black, but you're not black. No, 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 no. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm bluish, like uh, black and Jewish. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm, I'm Drake. No, I'm Polish Russian. People think I'm a little mixed because I got, you know. Well, you're in something. You're in. You're, you're in, well, you're in so many programs. Child, I'm a lot of black the, child Yeah, movies. movies and. I'm usually the I'm usually the funny white guy in, in a lot of urban. Uh, a lot now of. Now, tell you, stuff. speaking of that, now all right, now you've done so many of them. Tell me what your what your top three is. Top three favorite films. I know it's hard well, to they're do. The ones that are coming that, out. That you did. They're the ones did. that I'm out now. They're the ones <laughs> that I'm co- that are coming out now. I mean, but I was in a great. I was in a film with Essence Atkins, Mari Morrow, Roz Ryan, called Nikita Blues. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that, that was in 1999, and I did yeah, that. Was and Brandon, great. That's Brandon T. Jackson's first movie. Oh. So Brandon T. Jackson, Tropic okay. Thunder, from yeah, right. Percy Jackson, from, you know, Roll Bounce, a lottery ticket, all those. 
And uh, that was his first movie. His mm -hmm. dad actually financed that movie. Wow. Now, a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. So I know him from that. And then um, I like, uh, I did my first, my first real gig was with a rapper. Uh, who was that? Named Akinelli. Oh, I remember Akinelli. Akinelli, yeah, and he's yeah, from yeah. Uh, New York, and he's, one, he's, that, he's, that, he's the real first edition of the real sexual, raunchy rap that he just, and, and his big song in the 90s was, put it in your mouth, in your mother in mouth. Remember <laughs> Put it in your mouth, in your mother in mouth. I'm like, okay. So all, wow. of, all of a sudden. Great he, composer, everybody. He was doing Great a movie. Great composer. <laughs> he was doing a movie, uh, and he needed a best friend for the movie because it was rapper going back to college, and I was playing his roommate best friend in college. So I had to go, and then Lionel C. Martin, which was the big kid a a in the 90s, he did all the, all the, he did all the videos for anybody who's anybody in the 90s, mm -hmm. from TLC to, uh, uh, to Boys to Men, mm -hmm. to all those guys, Lionel C. Martin, and then Lionel ended up doing a movie called How to Be a Player with Bill Bellamy. Okay, yeah, yeah, I remember that. I met him at, when I was working on Melrose Avenue, and uh, I, he was my customer. And he, came, he was coming, and I said, listen, bro, give me a shot. I needed, at this point, I needed a shot. Yeah. It had been like seven, eight years I've been in Hollywood, and I'm like, how do, do I get on television? How can I do it? Who do I meet? I don't have agents sending me on auditions. I'm not up for anything. I wasn't up for anything. I, have, I don't even have a chance to even lose a role, to, let alone gain a role. So one day, so finally, I, I'm like, Lionel, you gotta give me a, you gotta give me a shot. Somebody calls me one day. He says, "Listen, Eddie, I got a movie. I want you to come in and blow me away." I said, "You got fucking right. I'm gonna come blow you away. Maybe the only opportunity I have in my life. I don't know what's gonna happen." Right. So I go in and I go in against everybody. Shang. Yeah. Alex Thomas. All these comedians back in the day. Dan and Green. Everybody back in the day. I was up against for this role. And I booked it. Nice. And, 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 you know, in how, in how, oh, we say, and we say that with love to Shang, who'll be doing the show soon. Right. So we'll be, <laughs> I love you, Shang. We say that we do love you, Shang. You know that. that part. Shang's got me. Shang's got me by the balls a little bit on his on his podcast. That's okay. No, I love Shang, man. Uh, and then from that Great point, dude. from that point on, people knew who I was. I'm, I wasn't mainstream, but in, in the world of comedy and comedians, because I hung around the comedy store a little bit, I hung around the improv. You I, were there for like the I chocolate did. Sundays yes. when all that was happening. Yes, yes. I yes. heard of the dangerous ass and, time and to I be did, hanging out. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I did the <laughs> improv, and I did the Laugh Factory. Mm. I did all those, but I didn't want to go the comedy route per se because I didn't like trying. I thought, how do I get on television without being on comedy? Right. Without doing comedy. So he gave me the shot because I killed the game in that movie. A movie came around called Long Shot. Ah, yeah. And Long Shot was with Britney Spears, In Sync, O Town, Antonio Sabato Jr., Paul Sorvino from. Um, oh, of course. Uh, from everything. From, from uh, freaking Goodfellas. Goodfe from Goodfellas, <laughs> uh, and and Tony, and Hunter Tylo from so all these. It was like, and uh, Lou Pearlman, the guy who put together In Sync and Backstreet Boys. Lou Pearlman was the guy behind those guys. He was the, he was the Dicers finance guy, mm -hmm. uh, Ponzi guy from, from Florida, for Orlando. He's the guy that brought in sync. In the, so he's doing this movie. And Lionel was, was uh, directing this movie. So he directed me in Akinelli's, um, it's called Octopus. And this movie came along, and I guess Sinbad, the comedian, couldn't do the part, or he was offered the part first, and he, he couldn't do it for some reason. And Lionel called me. Nice. So... I went and I did that movie, and that was a phone call. So I, I was, I literally booked that part, and it was the, like the, one of the biggest straight to video budgets ever, like $28 million budget. Wow. Everybody was in it. There's not much of a story. But other than that, I mean, if you're in Hollywood, you know, you can, if you're an actor, you can't act if you can't audition. Right. So really, acting is auditioning. Yeah. You know, Hollywood. I always felt, I've, I've always felt like that, uh, that the audition process in Hollywood is unneeded. I think that if you want, if you if you want somebody, you want to know what they do. Look at their work, you know, to have them actually have to come in 
and perform for you, and you know, and and a lot uh, of people can't stand it. The d- heat. It, it just it, it drives me nuts. Like if I, if I when I if I see somebody I want to do the show, I'd not well come in and let's see what you can do. I look at their work. Right. I see their work. A and I go, oh, I want to see work. people come and do the show. Yeah, a lot of people don't have their work. A lot of people don't have a reel back there. No, if they don't have a reel, I, then know? I'm then I'm all for like somebody coming in and yes, auditioning. Of but course, that's not Hollywood. But if it, I know, I know it's not. But I just all, I've just always felt like, God, if you would, there's so many people with so much good work, like why are they waiting in this hallway? Because they can't like audition. It, you know? people can't stand people can't stand the heat when it comes to auditions. They, they get so you're an audition. So you're an aud- you're a big audition guy. I, I know how to audition. Yeah, and that's why I book. Hmm? They're asking for tips. The audience is asking for tips on how to audition. Do you give tips, no, no how to or think. do you keep them to yourself? Know how to think. Know how to think on your feet. The best. The best. The best training is improv. Taking an improv class. That's mm. why. That's what helped me. I went. I did the. Oh, I did do the Groundlings, in in 1989 with Kathy Griffin. Oh, right on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that I, I was in the Groundlings. I only did their. I only did their beginner intermediate. But I was in. I was. I was. Uh, um, Paul Regina, who was on a show called The Brothers, HBO in the 80s. I don't know if anybody knows The Brothers, but it was called The Brothers. Uh, and that was with Paul Regina. He was in my class, and he was a big deal back then because Showtime was new. Mm-hmm. And he was on this show. It was a sh- HBO or Showtime, and he was on this show, and he was in the improv class with us. And we're like, Paul Regina's doing an improv class. Every time I saw him, I'm like, I watched him on TV, bro. This is great. <laughs> and by the way, I was an extra on The Wonder Years. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I loved that show. Yeah. I go back. But I you look do good go like back. I you look do, good you like look good. Mother. Well, let me ask you this though. Now, do you get recognized more by white people or black people? <laughs> well, I wonder. I Why is really the audience get, starts laughing? I don't really get recognized that much, but I mean, I've gotten recognized. But you're so times. recognizable, though. I am. You, but you don't get recognized. You know? I don't know what to be recognizable for. <laughs> but, but you don't. But, 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 you buy some <laughs> but you don't. But you don't get. You don't get that. No. I mean, I've gotten recognized. Uh, I got recognized in Michigan, but they saw me in Nikita Blue. And so yeah. I got, but, um, it's such good work. Such good work on you. I think that people Nikita are, Blues was, a good, yeah. was good, but it was Brandon G. Jackson right. meeting me. And because he met me, I'm the one actually that was, uh, that, that was the catalyst for his career. Mm-hmm. Because Chris Spencer, mm-hmm. comedian, mm-hmm. who does The Real Husbands of Hollywood with Kevin, yep. with Kevin Hart, Chris Spencer, I've known since 91. So, and his girlfriend was Dominique, and she was a big, big commercial girl in the 90s. Half black, half white, kind of Puerto Rican with curly hair. She was in every commercial all the time. But um, once that happened, then I was like, okay, now now I'm getting traction. Now I'm like, okay, I booked a movie. I booked, uh, then I got pulled into the set of Long Shot. Okay, things are going, things are happening. It's not totally happening yet, uh, but I, I feel like I'm, I feel like I have momentum, momentum, and then, and then came uh, the big break for big commercials, and that was 2004, 2005. Uh, we, are we wrapping on that? Okay. 2004, 2005. Okay. I booked some massive commercials for Coca-Cola. I was in the, all the theaters, and I was the money shot. Nice. And that's all. Uh, 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 you were the money shot. <laughs> Gabe Horn? I'm just leaving that alone. Gabe every Horn? You? Yeah, I, d- I decided to leave it alone. <laughs> Why, and why is it that conditioner of any conditioner for, for shampoo and conditioner, why is it that all conditioners look like sperm? <laughs> you ever notice that? It comes out milky white. You're like, um, and I'm like, I like conditioner. <laughs> Not good. But anyways, what was it? I think if it was red, it'd be scary to huh? people. What would you say? It tastes like, I'm, ew. <laughs> yes. <laughs> With salt. Well. I'm, I'm not even. Gonna, I'm not even gonna ask. I'm not even gonna ask. So, so, so tell me about. So you have a you have a film coming up right now. Then I have right now. You have AM, a, I have CK. AM radio. AM radio yep. just released. It's on. Uh, it's called and, AM radio. And you're it's opposite, about it. uh, opposite Omar, Omar Gooding, Gooding. That's right? Cuba yeah. Gooding Jr.'s brother. He's in a show called Family Time. Can you tell, can you tell us Gooding. about that? About that film? Yeah, that film is uh, based in Nashville, Tennessee, and it's about an embattled DJ who lost it. He lost. He fell from grace. Was a big FM DJ. Really went the, went the wrong way, and they fired him. And he ends up at an AM radio station. I'm the radio station owner, 
Okay. And I play a, I play a cubano, so I have to talk like this. I talk like that. You can't talk to the caller like that. You can't talk to the caller like that. You're going to get it like that. <laughs> so and you've got two more there. films? Uh, I have two more films. I have, um, I have a film coming out with Brandon C. Jackson. Nice. Actually. <laughs> Let's talk about that. And that one's uh, going to go to theaters, I believe, and that is called Trap City. Nice. And Trap City is about uh, a, a guy who's just uh, kind of running some drugs, you know, for a, a kingpin and trying to make his way through life, but he's a rapper, wants to be a rapper. And he happens to be in the commission of kind of driving some material, some inventory to a client per se. And he does, a, and he's rapping in the car, and his boy takes a boy takes a video of him and posts it. By the time between the posting, he goes to jail. He gets caught with the stuff, and he goes to jail. In the meantime, he goes viral while he's in jail from the car ride and the and the video that his friend took. And when he comes out, he's famous. And he comes out to me, his re the record label executive. So ah, I, okay. I star with him, and we we and, and we go. I go on the rise with him into stardom and, and concerts and, and making new music and, and right uh, taking him from oblivion and guiding his career. And I play his best. I play his agent, his uh, uh, the music company's um, the uh, label guy. Okay, and then you've got an, and then you've got another film coming. We got another film called uh, You Married Dad. You married that? <laughs> I I take it that's a. Uh, you married that? I, so Why? that is that from the? I, I take it that's, that's probably that's a, uh, a Jewish a Jewish film no, for Jewish right, people, right? right? Exactly. No, no, a black Jewish <laughs> film, a black Israelite film. Yes, and uh, <laughs> uh, it's uh, it stars Jahan Jones, and Jahan Jones has a lot of traction on YouTube and. He's got about two million Instagram followers, and he's done all these really funny videos. And he was—he's in Trap City. Okay. So I met him in Trap City, came back to LA. I said, "Jahan, let's hook up." He was doing a show called "You Hitting That," <laughs> and uh, and uh, he asked me to be on the show and play his boss on the show. So I did a seven-episode arc when he went from kind of videos to half-hour format. Yeah. So he wrote me into that, and then wrote me into the movie. So. I did seven episodes of that, and then the movie You, Ma you, you Married Dad came out, and uh, he still made the audition. I didn't know. <laughs> he didn't make me, and, and I'm like, I'm like, you wrote the part for me, and you're making me, what the fuck are you doing? You're the audition guy. Yeah. You know how to do it. Uh, yes, yeah, so yeah, it's fine. I did Yeah, that. yeah. Yeah, you're great. The, my yeah. audition was hilarious, because I play a gay wedding planner. So I'm this, and I'm this, and I'm yes, 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 and back. Uh, so... Uh, I, I was uh, so I jumped into that film and it's a really funny film and I believe it's my best comedy work personally nice. because the others aren't pure comedy so I'm about ready to step into the, I, I believe that I'm getting ready to fill the shoes of of what Jerry did mm -hmm. and Jim did ah. so I feel like I'm right on the precipice but you're right there yeah of the precipice of that and that, that I outlasted everybody. And I've out persevered everybody, and I'm and I'm still fresh and new, and I'm still, uh, I still got it. So yeah, you're right. So you're right. So that movie, uh, You Marry Dad's really funny, and it, and it stars uh, not only him, but you got April Jones from Love and Hip Hop, you got Michael Collier, we got Buddy Lewis, we have Lisa Ray, so we have a real funny cast of characters and a uh, and the situation and. Him and Jahan getting married to two women at the same time, uh, it was crazy. And, and Russian mafia coming after him oh. at the same time. And the so movie that good. has it all. Yeah. yeah. Right on, man. Yeah. Well, God, uh, we're going to go see it, everybody, right? Yeah. Make sure that we see everything that you do. It's going to be fantastic. One last thing I did. Yes. I, you know, I made a goal when it came to Hollywood. Don't fucking, uh, sorry. Don't <laughs> quit. Keep going forward, and you'll get it. Something's going to happen. I said I, I did everything I said I was going to do a long way. Commercial, and I did a sitcom last year. I, I guest starred on a sitcom called In the Cut. Nice. Yes, and that's with Kim Whitley. Mm. I mean, Kim Cole. Okay. Kim Cole's Love from, them both. Uh, from um, Living Single. Kim mm -hmm. Cole's, yes, and that was wonderful working with her. She's hilarious. But I, and then Bentley Evans, executive producer of the Jamie Foxx ah, and okay. Martin Show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah who I've known because I got my SAG card through that show in 98. That's all I forgot to tell you that. He ends up bringing me, and I think he's going to give me the part. He makes no audition, but I do that to my own audition. 
<laughs> but I play a French art dealer in that. As that episode's called Game Night, and it was really funny. And I talked like this. It's no problem for me to speak the French accent. Uh, the alt is this, the alt is that, you know. It's wee, 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 pee, pee. <laughs> right on. Eddie, man, thank you so much for coming on to the show, man. Thank you for having me, bro. You know, we've been so, super happy to have you here, yeah. man. Will you, come, will you come back and visit us? You going to come back and see us? Will you come I'm back and come see back us? come back and see you. Go to, go to Eddie Rubin Art, E-D-D-Y. R-U-B-I-N, art.com. I'm actually a celebrated artist now along with my art of acting. I'm an actual painter, and I'm opening a gallery next week. Fantastic. In the, in the heart of Sherman Oaks, California. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Woo! All right. Everybody, Eddie Rubin. Yes. We're going to pay some bills. We'll be right back after this to the B.D. Freeman Show. See you in a minute. for tuning in to the B.D. Freeman Show tonight. Thank you to our guest, Eddie Rubin. Yes, AM Radio. Make sure you watch that. And also next week, we've got Nia Peoples. Come on back next week. Good night, everybody. <laughs>